keynote speaker is one of the ASEAN authorities on e-commerce and digital marketing. She is also the digital influencer and leadership coach behind digitalfilipino.com. She is also known for her independent insights through unassuming mastermind coaching and sessions. Our keynote speaker will share to us the state of e-commerce and social media marketing, my mentor and coach, Janet Torat. For this opportunity to talk about and share about our virtual entrepreneur insights for this summit. Um, hi everyone, my name is Janet Toral. I'm from digitalfilipino.com. Today we live in challenging times, especially with COVID-19 affecting people around the world. And of course, it's also affecting our the Philippines, no? the people in live, living in different parts of the country where there are lockdowns or enhanced community quarantine uh, enforced. So for this presentation, I'm gonna share to you what, what I'm currently doing and how is this current situation affecting us and how are we moving forward. And I hope that you can also do the same or you can take some insights, take some inputs that you can also apply to your own business, all right? So when you look at e-commerce in 2018 and 2020, particularly uh, from a perspective of uh, the Philippines, uh, this is my observation. In 2018, actually, we encountered a bit of a slowdown in e-commerce in the country, primarily affected by two things. One is the influx of foreign goods. At that time, uh, we, we had this policy of any orders below the amount of 10,000 are not taxable. And of course, in the process, you now have a lot of Filipinos buying online and ordering them from abroad. So partly that affected the uh, local trading. Although recent, although moving forward, uh, the, the markets has, have also adjusted. It also created uh, new entrepreneurs at that time where uh, we got we had a popularity, we had an increasing popularity of drop shippers then. And uh, one thing that also affected uh, e-commerce was the heavy traffic being experienced in different parts of the country, especially in metro areas. Now, in 2019, recognizing the challenges that were, that was happening in 2018, the growth of cash on delivery, improvement of uh, logistic services that can offer cash on delivery in different parts of the country have grown also. We've seen a lot of logistics services start up. Some of them have come strong. Some of them have also died in the process. But uh, that provided a lot of options for Filipinos and encouraged also the growth of sellers in different parts of the country, especially when Facebook Marketplace, Carousel, and all the other friendly e-commerce services came to life, allowing Filipinos from different parts of the country to sell their products and services. Now, in 2020, with the effects of the COVID-19 uh, lockdown uh, in different parts of the world, of course, the travel industry was heavily affected. But in every problem, there is an, a challenge and an opportunity. It challenged the travel industry, which was the highest growing segment for the past few years in the area of e-commerce. But for 2020, we're also seeing the rise of online groceries and pharmacies. And I guess you can also say video con conferencing services, among others. Now, like, like any other entrepreneur, we also got affected by COVID-19. For example, we have an upcoming e-commerce entrepreneur summit in Cebu this coming uh, June 6, 2020. Um, so far, we remain optimistic that, we, that this will still uh, push through, but anything can happen. I think on our end, we have to wait until May to really decide whether that date will push through as is or whether we have to make adjustments. Um, for our certified e-commerce uh, specialist entrepreneur and professional program, uh, it is not so much affected because our current students are still pursuing their projects although what it may be what although what it may affect are the entry of new students because right now because of the uncertainty there are two things you can do you can hold on to your resources for as long as you can and minimize spending 
And for other people who may have extra resources, this is a time to invest. But of course, not everyone is making that. Most of, most people are not making that decision right now, especially since for most parts of the world, this is the first month of the quarantine. So a lot of people are still pushing through with what, what they're doing. Like, for example, we have people who are participating in our masterminds in the Maxo Speakers Club and those availing our creative agency mastermind or branding and influencer marketing mastermind, those are still pursuing as is. And I guess if there's indication that, that you know, things will get back to normal soon, or if you believe that eventually we will all go back to normal soon, then perhaps uh, most of the people will decide, you know, to just, um, how do you call that? Uh, wave through, you know, just remain steady and float and, you know, hang in there, keep yourself competitive, keep yourself protected so that uh, by the time that this is gone or by the time that we've crossed this path, you know, all things shall pass, right? Whether good times or bad times, this too shall pass. So for those who are still pursuing, then I guess, you know, uh, they're focusing on keep on improving themselves. It's part of keeping yourself sane, no, with everything that is happening right now. Now, it's also changing the way we do business, definitely. For one, uh, rather than remain worried that our e-commerce entrepreneur summit will not push through, we decided instead to use this opportunity to create uh, learning events every week so that we can keep our market focused. Like, hey, you know, we have a lot of challenges, but we should remain focused. Like uh, last week, we have the state of PH social media on how are we behaving at these times online. And uh, recently, we also had a state of PH online groceries trying to understand how this market is benefiting from whatever is happening. And then, to help people out because right now i think one of the segments that are heavily affected are the freelancers and i guess those people who are contemplating whether they should work from home or or pursue other opportunities if, especially if they lost their jobs so for those who have decided to take charge and learn uh, we've also launched the certified blog and social media entrepreneur program scholarships but instead of offering it to the public of at large, I focus on um, the 5,000 students that we have trained for the past three years, giving them the opportunity to reconnect. And we've limited it to that segment because these are the people who are more or less familiar to our methodology so that if they join the program, their likelihood of success will be higher because they are already familiar with the process of how we teach. No? And masterminds uh, remain and still continuing like recently i just started the developing the leader within you uh 2.0 mastermind and i'm glad that a lot of people that several people took this program and benefiting from the advantage of you know keeping yourself resilient keeping keeping your perspective as a leader and grow yourself as a leader especially in these challenging times now when you look at the industry at large um, I mentioned earlier that because of these developments, groceries are definitely thriving at this time. In our recent webinar, we've seen the, the rise of Oh My Grocery, which started as a B2B platform. Uh, now they're now offering pre-packed grocery essentials to deliver to consumers because they're seeing the need for that, especially for those who don't want to go to the grocery and fall fall in line and you know subject to the long wait and uh, the distance the, the distancing where only a few people can be in a grocery at a time so before it may take you an hour to finish your groceries and be at home now it will take you at least three hours because you will be subjected to the long lines and uh, the popular service uh, grab that offers transportation services delivery services food services have also launched their grocery uh, services and provided it to uh, they start providing it to people living in nearby in a in a targeted location but they are also expecting that more people from other locations can benefit from the service and i think that's the beauty also of uh well on when you look at crisis 
the, the worst of us and the best of us can come out. No? So I think if I will look at the best of us, then seeing all of these innovations, companies really try, and individuals really trying to think of how can they innovate, how can they offer something new. I think that's the positive that we're seeing at this time. It's a, it's a time for us to level up and be our best to other people. So how should we move forward? No? And I think one of the things that we need to take note of is the observations that we're also seeing in social media. And although, of course, there's a lot of things happening there, the usual politics remain there, but I think uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of good coming out in social media as well. We're now seeing a lot of people doing their part in educating, like if they see something that can help other people that can benefit from it. So you're seeing a lot of people doing their part in educating each other. There's now an influx of uh, free learning sessions online, free courses online. So I think this is the time that you should invest and invest in time and really sign up for all of those uh, free learning programs because those are limited by the time this is done or by the time this is over a lot of people will resume and get back to normal so for those uh, who would like to learn it's interesting and take to take part in a lot of this uh, free learning programs today second i think it's really important that we maintain help in maintaining calm Although there are a lot of reasons why we have to be angry, especially when we're seeing people doing irresponsible stuff. But I think uh, this is not the time that we put people down. It's really us being more understanding of other people. Yeah, of course, it does not indemnify them of their legal liabilities, but it doesn't help that we feast on them no? or encourage others and to feast on people who have made mistakes. No? This is the time that we should be more understanding, compassionate, and maintain calm. If people have to be liable for their actions, then so be it. But we should not add more to the injury that is, uh, I mean, add insult to the injury, as they would say. No? And then it's also a time to really reflect on your perspective. Of course, all of us have a lot of biases, but I think this is the time also that we should appreciate people's perspective while, I, I mean, uh, developing your perspective or keeping in touch or keeping your perspective intact. Because I think all of the reactions that we're seeing online right now, how we see situations, whether we should behave and look at it from a positive or negative perspective was heavily influenced by how by our own experiences in the past, maybe on how we got treated or how we've seen things like this treated in the past. And uh, maybe I came from a perspective where uh, I've seen um, tolerance in terms of uh, recognizing faults, but at the same time moving forward with swift action. And maybe that is why when I see people being attacked or or clubbered on, <laughs> clubbered when when they do some misdeeds uh, and being publicly persecuted, I have a different uh, feel about it. And of course, for a lot of people who may feel the same, they may not necessarily express it, no, uh, because you know they it's all of us have different perspective of that. But I think recognizing that we all have different perspective, we should all be sensitive to it and not just assume that, you know, everyone should behave that way, no. And, and I guess that also falls into the spirit of maintaining calm and staying positive. Yes, we should speak out, especially when things are not happening as, as, as it ought to be, especially right now where we're being forced, where we're being compelled to do things that is out of the norm, that is sacrificing our livelihood, no, among other things. But we should stay positive. We can raise our concerns and and appeal for them to be properly addressed using proper channels. And of course, I guess rat in social media once in a while, especially when it's too much. But overall, we should focus on at least 80% being positive for our loved ones, for our friends, for people who are worried and nervous at this time, because you know it's the the energy that we remit, that we emit, no, in what we post and what we communicate. We should assume that uh, one way or the other, it's gonna affect the people that we are in close circles with. 
Okay? So, my suggested uh, plan of action, I think I'd like to focus on four areas. All right? So, number one, we should focus on delivering whatever commitments that, we've ha that we have to our customers prior to the lockdown or enhanced community quarantine. We should focus on fulfilling them. And like in my case, uh, since I've been teaching for quite some time now virtually, so I must admit it's still the usual for me. I still do my webinars. I still do my mastermind. I still do my coaching sessions. Although, of course, my face-to-face -face events are affected right now, meaning my all my speaking engagements got moved to a latter date. But I can still continue um, doing the education part using available online resources. And I think this is also a good opportunity to experiment. Uh, you can use the downtime to finish your backlog, of course. And at the same time, this is an opportunity to create new products and services, launch experiments, see whether it will work or not. What may not work during the lockdown period may work when all of this is over. But I think there's an opportunity now to experiment, get feedback from people because you have more people now having time. I mean, before when you organize webinars because everyone is so busy, the number of people attending sessions are not as many or especially if it's a series of days no, or, or weeks. But now, because of what is happening, a lot of people are making time for it because, you know, they don't have much else to do uh, apart from, you know, binging on your favorite TV series, among others. So everyone is looking for some form of variety and, um, and, and different, you know, different types of content, different types of activities so that you don't get bored and keep yourself excited, keep yourself growing and in, in the process, keep yourself positive also in that aspect. So on your end as entrepreneurs or on my end as, entre as, an, as a virtual entrepreneur, that means I have to think of what products and services can I come out with. Although I must admit, I am not really focused at, at that part at this time because uh, I signed up for so many online learning programs last Black Friday. I think last Black Friday, I enrolled in three big learning programs. Uh, last November, uh, I signed up for three big training programs. And then May last year, I also signed up for a certification program. That is the one I'm finishing right now because it's going to expire already. And then I also signed up with three big learning programs last November. So I decided that this is the time that I really have to go through that and uh, use it as a means to and gradually start integrating it in, in my teachings and in my practice. And I think this is also a good time to connect, keep in touch with customers in the community and inspire them to move forward. Uh, on my end, um, I think fortunately on my end, I started keeping in touch with all the past customers. I think most of the past customers that I had uh, around no, the December last year. So as a result, my December, January um, were, were particularly hectic times because those were the days where I would be talking to 8 to 10 people every day through virtual conferencing just to keep in touch and catching up and, um, and doing coaching sessions. And in fact, a lot of them today are still going through that process, although on a less frequency. No? And and the payoffs for that are big because it allows you to have listen to other people's point of view, find out what is important for them, and then possibly come up with um, new offerings in the future that can more or less that can more or less address some of the challenges that were raised by the people that I got a chance to talk to that I, that I may not have a solution right now. But it also makes me sensitive as to what, what should be out there or what, what should the things that need to be considered. But of course, with COVID-19, um, a lot of our plans are rattled. It, it has affected 
um, everything that we want to do, especially during this quarter. But I think it does not mean that people will not move forward and achieve their bigger picture goals, although there may be some calibration on how we're going to do it, how we're going to deliver it. And the fourth part is adding value. Um, of course, one of the ways that we can add value is by the creation of our own products and services. But I think adding value right now needs to step up further. You look at ways that you can collaborate with other people, with other customers. Um, meaning before, you just instead of just thinking on how can I profit from my customer, you now have to think about maybe there's something that I can do where I can collaborate my customer, where I can collaborate with my customer. So you feel that you can add value in a different way and you're also giving opportunities for people to also add value to you, especially if they are also in a situation where they are looking for various means and ways that they can add value to others. And I think that is a common um, sentiment or a common um, thinking right now for that maybe not for a lot not for everyone but i think for most of us you know we're looking at you know we want to survive this and rather than just think of doing it alone we might as well do it together how can we work together how can you know maybe is this a time is this a time for us to think about what can we do moving forward what are the things that we can explore moving forward whether we can do it at this time or maybe we can do it in the future but hey, since we're in this situation now, might as well do something right now, you know. So that is something that we can also think about. Um, now, I'd like to move on to my uh, last slide. And I think um, there there is some... There is a question that was uh, provided also from by Ruben in terms of how can we... Um, maximize our time and then at the same time how can we how can we be more hopeful no? and I think for me it's it's really focused on these four areas I mean apart from fulfilling the plan of action that I mentioned earlier I think the focus on these four areas uh, the first one is the focus on growth we, we we should use this opportunity to keep on growing it's not an excuse for us to you know not to grow because of the so many things that we can do. Instead of looking at what you can do, look at what more can you do at this time. Like I mentioned earlier about the various learning programs, connecting, collaborating with people. I think that is an important thing that we need to focus on at this time. Second, we also need to look into um, contribution. Apart from collaboration, contribution is also about do, doing something good for others in collaboration one way or the other there can be some form of a return but with collaboration or uh, but with contribution sometimes we do things without expecting anything in return from others and but but it gives us um you know greater meaning for ourselves it it fulfills the purpose of why on earth we're here you know and I think uh, that is something that we should also we should also look look into because you know this is not the only crisis that we're going to encounter. We're gonna encounter more crisis in the future. So maybe with what happened now, we can start thinking about what can we do in the future so that we can what what can we do on our part to prevent crisis like this, and what can we do on our part so that when something like this happens in the future how can we be more prepared how can we be more of help to others no and then of course uh this is this is the time where there's a call for leadership you know that we all have to um step up lead others in our home we have to lead our family members we have to call on our family members standing up for leadership and not just you know wait take initiative at the household in the household but we should also take initiative online in terms of how can we be of help to others guide people towards a certain direction especially if especially those that we care those that we care of and those who are looking for leaders at this time um so i'm i'm sure for a lot of you you have received emails from people 
trying to find out what can they do, trying to get some sense of people who can lead them. And I guess one of the reasons for that is they're also looking for opportunities to, so that they can also help. They are also looking for help in getting over the various crises that they are seeing right now, right? And, and I think this is also an opportunity for us to really innovate and think about the way we do things. How can we be more efficient? How can we be more resilient? How can we make our products and services, our offerings be more accessible to as many people as possible? And letting people down to the grassroots uh, level, regardless of what part of the country they are from, to benefit from it. And I think the moment that we start looking beyond ourselves, we're growing, but not for ourselves, but so that we can benefit more people and, and, and making sure that for more people to benefit from, it, from this, we, have, we will step up our leadership by increasing our capacity, increasing our influence, and build momentum so that more people can benefit from it and integrate that with and integrate innovation in the process. And most likely, you will experience exponential growth in the future. All right. So thank you very much, Ruben, for this opportunity. And I hope that for the virtualpreneurs uh, who are here with us right now, um, a lot of things are happening. We are all affected by COVID-19, but it does not mean that the world has to stop. We all have to move forward and explore the things that we can do. So for those who have signed up with our e-commerce entrepreneur summit in Cebu, so I hope to see you on June 6, whether we see you face-to-face -face or online. And the same goes for our students in the certified e-commerce professional program. Just keep working on your projects. I'm sure that you will, uh, the time will come where, where your products and services will rise above uh, with whatever is happening right now. Focus on serving a bigger public. Make your business model crisis uh, resilient. No? And for our uh, patrons, particularly those who are into our coaching services and those who are investing in their masterminds right now, trying to grow themselves as a leader, as a public speaker, and improving your leadership, improving your branding, improving your influence. Keep at it because it it will. It's not about the now. It's also about the future and the people that you work with moving forward. Growing yourself as a leader is the best investment that you can make for yourself because sooner or later, you're also going to develop other leaders and you cannot give what you don't have. So we have to keep on improving ourselves so that we can also impart the same to others. All right. So thank you very much for joining the session. Thank you, Ruben. And Congratulations to everyone participating in this Virtualpreneur Summit.